I noticed you brought your lunch. I did. I brought a sandwich with yeah. me, which is yeah. sitting just out of frame. Yeah. Because <laughs> I thought me holding a sandwich during my interview would be a little on the nose. It'd be like one of those Renaissance paintings of the Virgin Mary where she's got like a heart kind of thing. Right. You know it's there anyway. <laughs> right. <you know? laughs> so what have you been up to since we last saw you? I know you have all fantasy everything is yes. taking off. It's just amazing. We have the dopest fans. And Pete, like, we're at the point where people are sending us stuff. We've been, like, sent hot sauce and brownies. Oh, that's good. Yeah, which is good separately. Right. <laughs> For those who are... The off chance are unfamiliar with the podcast. It's a great concept. Tell oh, us yeah. briefly about what we it is. We fantasy draft things that aren't sports. So we just pick a topic, whether it's like sandwiches or TV shows that never won an Emmy or words that you think make you sound smart. And then we go around, four of us or three of us, and take turns picking things from those categories, which is really interesting. It's like a fun way to learn about like your guests without... Me trying to be like a knockoff version of Mark Maron. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> Were you one of those guys who played fantasy sports at all before I this? Would, this is actually how I came up with the idea. I did play fantasy sports, but I loved the draft, and I loved picking things. And then once I picked them, the rest of the season, I was that like asshole in the, in the fantasy group who just never updated his lineup. Right. I just kind of like picking them, and I was then like, and then off, off into the wild. So I was like, what, can I do like just the best part about fantasy drafting? over and over and over again without ever having to like pay attention to stats or anything like that. Anything you're looking forward to doing in town this time uh, around? I'm really excited just to do stand up. I've been yeah. I work on like a television show in LA so like all the time I'm just stuck in there like writing so many Trump jokes. <laughs> so many with just none of them mean anything. Where we've right. done like every iteration you can of every kind of Trump story. So I'm excited to just go up and like on stage and talk about sandwiches or Charles yeah. Barkley or whatever it is that doesn't have anything to do with politics. I imagine there must be a real fatigue among late night writers with, you know, it's like probably at the beginning, yeah. kind of interesting, funny. Well, the beginning you're like, oh, we have every monologue figured out, thank you. You know, yeah. we're the only people benefiting from this administration who aren't billionaires. Uh, and now it's just, it's the worst. Like yeah. every day you're like, he did it, what, again? Yeah. Just like another fucking, can we cuss? Yes, Another yes. fucking, like, just yes. another fucking story. And another person he slept with who he shouldn't have slept with. But the jokes about that person who he fucked are, like, similar to the jokes about the other person. It's maddening. It's the right. worst. It's just, like, you're on this treadmill of mediocrity the whole time. So it's I'm looking forward to doing stand-up yeah. and not thinking about politics for three days. Some late-night writer made a wish on a monkey's <clears throat> paw, and it came true. Right, you know? exactly. Yeah, I wish we didn't have to work so hard on the monologue. I mean, it was, it was just the middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll let you get to your sandwich. Thank I know you, you have a podcast yeah. about this happen.